Well, the first year that the club got going was the uh, winter of 1934-35. And uh, there were two stone houses out on King Street, and one of them served as a clubhouse. And it was about oh, close to a mile to walk back to the hill. Oh, really? And this is the front hill here. There was a fence halfway across, and uh, they'd remove the fence for the winter skiing. And um, but there was always the dip in it, you know. Or oh the, yeah. You got the, yeah. the the and that was that was always pretty tricky to get across that without falling. Uh, That's the joys of old fence line. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And um, they really didn't know how to turn in those days. Uh, there's um. One fella here, Joe Schiedel, that's Joe, uh, an Austrian, and he knew how to ski and, and, and to turn, and he could do the telemark uh, turn and a jump stop. And uh, now this is um, the base of the now Sugar uh, Bowl Hill. And this is the sumac, and. Uh, most of the skiing was done in the, on the front hill in the early years, and then they moved onto the sumac because it had a little more protection from the wind and got a little more snow. Now I'm sorry, I don't know who they are. There's a lot of pieces here. Yeah, the fellow with the breeches was bad. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. But he was taking the movies. Uh, well, no, Dad was taking the movies, but I, mm -hmm. you know, I... They didn't have uh, automatic release bindings? No, there. no, they're, the bear trap bindings. And your foot, your heel was free to lift, too. Well, it's almost like a cross-country skiing. Yes, yeah. See, we've gone full oh. circle. Yeah, that's Dad there, without the pole. That looked like Claire Duffus. Claire Duffus was really the guy that got the thing going. Uh, this is Claire Duffus here. Yeah. Now, this is when the, the jump was being built. Always referred to as the, as the jump hill, and it was all done by hand. Except um, they had a a shovel with a, a horse at the bottom and a horse at the top. Oh, there it is. Yeah, and that's that's the shovel or the scoop. And that's Claire Duffus on the right, on the left, and um, Hallowell, uh, Dave Hallowell, on the right. And that's the farmer with the horse and Dave Schneider on the right with uh -huh. the tie. Yeah. And well, that's a lot of hard hands. Oh, yes. And that's one of the Hearn boys. I don't know which one it was. Um, and he gave the signal to the horses to go forward and back. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. And that's our dog. Uh oh, uh -huh. <laughs> That's Dave Schneider again. Dave turned out to be a video. Dave Hallowell, but Dave Snyder turned out to be really one of the one of the best skiers the club ever had. The fellow on the one end of the saw is Schaefer. I'm not sure of his first name. They got set a hold up there, eh? That's for sure.
Well, this is all volunteer all, labor, I guess. All volunteer labor. Uh, the farmer probably got something, but. Where they were building it up there, that's where yes, the jump in That's right, it. yeah. Now, I'm on the left, and uh, neighbor Bob Rook is oh, the one really? on the right, yeah. Now, here's Joe Shield. Uh, Galunda Sprung and, uh -huh. <laughs> and a Telemark Turn, yeah. <laughs> and a jump stop. Uh -huh. <laughs> There's someone here that's and he could skate. Later, I think. Yeah, that's Dave Schneider. Uh -huh. Set up for slalom for a a slalom, yes. When did the toes go in, or even the first toe? I don't know uh, when it went in. It went in from the the bottom of the jump hill to the top of the sumac, and it was it was uh, electric. Now I think it had to be close to the uh, the end of the first war. Uh, the engineer that did it worked for Seagram's and he was able to get a, a used motor and it was set up as an electric mm -hmm. tool. That's why that's a lot of work walking up yes. that hill to go down that quick. Right. Yeah. See how open the countryside is around there too. Yes. This is back on the sumac. Well, that's Dad. So this is about the time the property was first purchased? No, they, no, the no, no, the purchase, uh, it was always, um, always rented. It was owned by uh, a number of people. The, uh, the front part was owned by uh, Lewis family, the Lewis bread people in London, and uh, then the Sims owned uh, uh, part of it, and uh, then to the uh, Northeast, there was another owner. Uh, was there a Jan's Trucking or or a Jankowski or something like that? But there were there were three or four landowners. And then the club rented it. And they yes. they just they just rented it. Yes. Uh -huh. I forget what year it was that that the, the club actually acquired the property through the GRCA. You mm -hmm. you know that yeah, with the the. Uh, uh, Kitchener is uh, benefiting. Now that's Claire Duffus on the on the megaphone again. But this is a jump meet. Uh, this was, I think, during the war, and we had a bunch of the Norwegian airmen in training. Oh, really? And uh, this was this was their sport, and so they they came to compete and show off, and they get big crowds. This is not a big crowd here, but uh, boy, everyone's lined up right beside the hill. Mm-hmm. No. Oh, he didn't make it. And a lot of them didn't make it. <laughs> These movies are superb. Yeah, they really stood up well. We're actually 
actually coming near to the end of the first reel here. Well, it's the jumping that really got the spectators out. And look at the crowds. Yes. Sure, cry. far cry from what it what it is today. <laughs> There's still a lot of crowds out there for that event. Oh yes, they don't get crowds like that um, for ra ski racing today. <laughs> Not in Kitchener. No. <laughs> and they didn't have too much snow then either, did they? Oh, here's Dave Schneider doing a, a flip. Well, helping. Well, these these are certainly the Norwegian guys. You can tell they're jumping a little better, and and uh, they used to wave their arms for balance back then. Yes. There's another interesting thing, too, that <clears throat> for many, many years there was a uh, big flagpole on the top of, of Chickadee Hill. You could you know, see bits of it once in a while on this film. Mm -hmm. The Rotary Club of, of uh, Kitchener would put a flag on that every 24th of May. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, being on the top of the hill, it looked pretty wind damage so that was usually in, in threads before too long but they make a trek out there every 24th of May and put on a new flag there you can see the base yeah. of the flag flagpole back then the vandals didn't come out the next night and tear it down uh, no no but there was a big brass globe at the top and I remember it being full of, of, of bullet holes oh I'll bet yeah Now this is on the front hill going down in to the the uh, there was a spring at the base of the of the of the sugar hill now this is a sumac that was dave schneider the last one this is joel sheila you can see in this one they're turning a little better mm -hmm. This is a year or two later. Uh, yeah, I think it's about a year later. Miss Dave Schneider again. About 1936 or seven. Yeah, it's something like that. Yeah. in a, a drive shed that was next to the ski club and a uh, big, big stone fireplace. They always had a fire going in there so you could wax your ski, mm -hmm. usually a pine tar base, and rub it on, warm them up, rub them down. And, and, uh, if you could wax your skis properly, why well, you had less trouble climbing the hill. If you didn't have That's that for sure. Herring bone, you could wax straight up, and there was a, a lot of skill in waxing the skis then. You can tell here the the hill's been groomed a bit. 